We are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. Behave yourselves. <laughs> For that is the secret to Lumacorp's success. Control the head, and then you control the body. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. This is J.R. Moore coming to you live from deep in the mountains of the Missouri Ozarks on Wednesday, the 11th day of July, year of our Lord, 2012. Welcome to the John Moore Show. I did get a call yesterday from a private trusted source, a very disturbing call uh, that I've been pondering how to report this to you since I got it mid-morning yesterday. And I've decided the best thing to do is just to, well, tell it like it is and not hold back, except to protect my source, of course. Well, here's what's going on. Uh, the U.S. military in the last week has begun conducting briefings for dependents, dependent military families, uh, the uh, husbands and wives of the men and women in the military. These would be the dependents that are stationed on the near the East Coast, the Atlantic Ocean, near the West Coast, the Pacific Ocean, and near the Gulf Coast. At these briefings are being told the following, that there's this planetary-sized object called Nibiru that's coming into our solar system. It's going to be causing very severe problems, much more so than it already is, very soon and that they're being put on standby to bug out. They're being told that there'll be little notice, possibly two weeks or so, before they're given the notice to bug out. Also, by the way, they're being shown a map at these briefings, and they're signing non-disclose agreements before they go into the briefings, before the briefings begin, agreeing to not disclose to anybody else what they're learning. Anyway, at these briefings, uh, these people are being told that um, when the call comes, they will only be able to take basically what you would take if you were flying on a commercial airline, uh, a carry-on bag and one check bag with uh, family photographs, uh, personal uh, important papers, documents, and whatever clothes you can fit in. End of story. And they have to abandon all their other clothing, personal possessions, furniture, appliances, automobiles, all the rest of it. Uh, I, well, the automobiles, I'm not sure. They might be bugging out in personal vehicles. That's, that's unclear to me. And it's probably going to be a mixed bag of how people make their way uh, away from these coastlines. I was talking to Tim Spencer about this and my friend, Command Sergeant Major Page, uh, both of whom are veterans of the U.S. military. And um, the agreement between the three of us was that these kinds of briefings would not take place a year in advance. They would not take place six months in advance. Four to six weeks is probably pretty likely. Probably not more than three or four months. So that's, that's our belief. I hope we're wrong. I hope that uh, this turns out to be a, uh, incorrect information. If it is, well, that's great. If it's not, if it turns out to be correct, then you've got your heads up. So I asked a question this morning to all of you out there, to the several thousand of you listening to me on the morning of July 11, 2012. What would you do if you had six years to prepare? What would you do if he had six months to prepare? What would you do if he had six weeks to prepare? There's going to be different answers to those three different questions, aren't there? Six weeks is a possibility. I hope it's wrong. I truly, in, in, in my heart of hearts, hope that that is wrong. I know that at some point that we will get warnings like this that are viable and will be the real deal. And I, unfortunately, I think this may be it. I don't know. I, I, hope, it, I hope it is not. Uh, my source will be 
I'll be talking to my source on a weekly basis for the uh, foreseeable future, for probably several months into the future, probably till the end of this year, most likely. We're going to be getting to go, getting to know each other real well, <laughs> and uh, communicating as we uh, track this thing and see where it goes. Uh, my source doesn't want to hear this either. I mean, we're, we're both mature men. We're both Vietnam vets, and um, he has a life he's put together for himself and his family that he doesn't want to see disrupted. I have a life I've put together for myself and my family I would just soon not see disrupted. Uh, but, but reality is, well, it is what it is. And... <sighs> When, I, when we when we get when we get the call when we get the the call about the bug out, uh, I will report it the the next show I'm on the air. Anyway, the the, the um, my source told me about this dependent. My source is not the dependent, by the way. The dependent was looking at my map and saying that my map very uh, was very close to the map that uh, the dependent was shown at the briefing. Very close. Uh, as, as we say, as Tim Spencer would say, close enough for government work. There's going to be deviations between uh, the map that I recreated working with the three Navy veterans and the map the government is showing. However, uh, it is close enough. Uh, Knowing if Aunt Nellie's house is going to be underwater in South Carolina really is not the issue. And no, it's not. The issue is the Atlantic Coast, Pacific Coast, and Gulf Coast will all be underwater, 50 miles inland, 75 miles inland, 100 miles, depending on where it is, wiping out the regions the homes, the businesses, the schools, the hospitals, where people, where about half this population in the United States live, work, and play, including Washington, D.C., New York, Baltimore, Miami. It's a long list of major cities. That's the point. Not whether Aunt Nellie's house is going to be underwater in South Carolina. That's not really the issue. People that, that live near the Atlantic coast, Pacific coast, Gulf Coast. I've had these conversations dozens of times the last 10 years. They, they want to go to a map. They want to look at my map and see if, if their house or if Aunt Nellie's house is going to be underwater. That's not the point. It's human nature. You're going to try to do that. I know that. That's not the point. The uh, briefings I'm getting from my confidential source have the ring of truth to them. They do. And I will do everything I, I need to do to protect my source, make sure my source remains confidential. In fact, the original source does not even know that they are a source. That's how uh, uh, we've kept this uh, confidential. They don't even know they're a source. But that's a good thing. It protects them also. Searching for a date, searching for a time frame is something, it's human nature. I get these inquiries all the time whenever I have these conversations with uh, groups of people or individuals. When's this going to happen, John? Well, I still don't know. I know I'm, I'm reporting as much as I know right now. As my friend Professor McCanny would say, and he published this in his book, a lady was asking about a time frame, and his response was, well, ma'am, if I give you a date, what are you going to do, buy another case of tuna fish? I think that's almost a word-for-word -word, uh, uh, quotation there. Last-minute preparations uh, means getting down to prioritizing, making a list of priorities, making sure you have the things that you, the essentials that you absolutely must have, your water filter, your food supply, medical supplies, communications equipment, you know, whatever 
boots and hats and gloves, fuel stored up, seeds for your gardens. I got hopefully a, a safe haven. That would be a really, really good thing, a safe haven where you can live and be safe and grow your own food away from a major, major metropolitan area at a good altitude with a decent growing season, plenty of water and so forth. If you don't have a safe haven, I would urge you to secure one. I think that would be one of the highest priorities a person could ha could and should have is securing a safe haven for themselves and the people they care about. These next few months between now and October. Do we have six weeks, eight, 12? I don't know how many weeks we've got. Maybe we've got 120 weeks. Make your list of priorities and work the, work the top priority first, then number two, and then number three, and so forth. You can work on two or three priorities at the same time, by the way. You don't have to limit yourself to one at a time. When Dr. Deagle, it's been, what, four years ago now, asked me to make a, a top ten list of things for preparedness, I, it, it, it instantly struck me as something uh, very essential. Uh, a, an excellent exercise. I had not done it before. So I put together my top 10 list. And uh, Dr. Deagle and I have talked about that several dozen times the last few years on the Friday afternoon show on Genesis, the third, Dr. Deagle's third hour. Uh, as you regular listeners know that hear me on Dr. Deagle, I do get to talk a little bit. <laughs> um, At some point, uh, my source will let me know, and I will let you know. We have a caller on hold here, Linda in Ohio. Good morning, Linda. Hi, John. Um, I just got my new video, so <laughs> um, I need uh, I needed to ask you. And thank you for uh, updating because uh, I have new listeners listening in, and so you know they haven't heard any of this information. Before, so I know you think it's repetition, but well, I, well, coming into this cold can be quite a shock to say the least. But go ahead, Linda. I understand. Um, are any of the are the lakes being affected? I live about 30 miles away from Lake Erie. Right. Or, well, um, or just the ocean. The, the, the larger the body, the larger the body of water, the more it, it's going to have a. There's going to be problems. Um, uh, what, what's your altitude above sea level, Linda? You know, I used to know, but um, I've been going to work in and out so much, I, I can't remember anymore, but I will find okay. out. Okay. Well, uh, Google Earth, you can find the altitude of any place, above sea level, any place on the planet with Google Earth. Okay. And, and uh, what, well, how far away from the Atlantic Ocean are you? Oh, I'm in Ohio. Oh, you're in Ohio. Oh, okay. yeah. And then, okay, well, you're far enough inland. You've got mountains between you and the ocean. Um, you're probably going to be okay. Uh, I w I'd want to be some altitude above Lake Erie, uh, maybe 100 feet or so, because there's going to be a lot of things other than just the uh, oceans coming out of their basins. There'll be 200 mile an hour winds. There'll be earthquakes. Uh, there'll be uh, a lot of meteors um, hitting our, hit our, our dear old planet here. Uh, but as far as Lake Erie is concerned, I would just want to be maybe 100 feet or so above uh, the lake level, uh, just for a bit of a margin of safety. What's the nearest city that you're near, Linda, and how far are you from it? Uh, the nearest big city is Cleveland. Yes. Cleveland. And how, far, how far are you from Cleveland? Uh, about, I'd say, 75 miles. Okay, well, that's, that's not as far away as I'd like to see, but it, it's uh, not too bad. Um, you live in a fairly small town? Yes. Okay. Well, these small towns, is, is there a lot of agriculture in your area? Uh, farming, ranching? Uh, yes, there is, as a matter of fact. Okay. All right. Well, people involved in agriculture tend to be fairly independent. It's just part of their lifestyle. Um, uh, most of these men that have these tractors and, and their farm equipment, they take great pride in being able to repair and maintain almost everything on their equipment without any outside help. So you've got in your neighborhood 
a lot of very independent people who are used to taking care of themselves. That's a real good thing, Linda. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, yeah, uh, thank you for the information. Bye-bye. You're welcome. Well, here's a top ten list. I put this together for Dr. Deagle. Um, it looks like uh, September 3rd, 2010. And uh, number one, at least two, Gravity Feed, high-quality Gravity Feed, Berkey water filters. I do offer them for sale on my website. You don't want anything that takes electricity or pressure to work your water filter. Uh, number, number two, uh, at least one 30 caliber rifle and 500 rounds of ammunition for each adult. Uh, of course, these skills and uh, to go with that uh, owning a, a weapon of any kind. Number three, cast iron cook pots and skillets you know, with cast iron lids. Uh, they can be used indoors, they can be used on campfires, and will last for decades if properly cared for. You need a truck or a large van, preferably diesel, uh, so that you can carry people and supplies and equipment. Number five, a heavy canvas tents or tarpaulins for emergency shelter for yourself or for unexpected guests. Number six, 900 pounds of grain per person per year, at least a two-year supply of grain uh, per, per, uh, per person. Properly stored so that when the weevils hatch out in there, there's weevil, there's, um, weevil larvae in uh, all bulk grains uh, so that they can't live. You can store it in nitrogen, uh, in carbon dioxide, in a vacuum. Um, there's different ways to do that. And number seven, a comprehensive medical kit, same kind of kit that the paramedics use. And of course, the skills to go with it. A good place to get a professional grade uh, paramedic kit is GALS, G-A-L-L-S, GALS.com. They have, they have uh, the same things that uh, the paramedics use because they sell to the paramedics. Number eight, heavy leather high top boots. This is kind of a generic way of saying buy your boots, trousers, jackets, gloves, hats, at the same place the farmers and construction workers buy their clothing and boots. Not the cheap, lightweight stuff sold at sporting goods stores that won't last. That's meant for casual recreational use. Much of the things they sell at places like Walmart simply aren't durable enough, especially the boots and shoes. I've never seen a pair of boots and shoes at Walmart that I, that I would put any trust in for long-term heavy use. Number nine, vacuum-packed heritage garden seeds. It kind of speaks for itself. Uh, you're going to be growing your own food, uh, maybe growing in a little bit extra food so you have something to trade or sell. Number 10, a copy of the book entitled Dare to Prepare. Dare to Prepare by Holly Deyo, D-E-Y-O, available at Stan and Holly's website, standeo.com. The... Uh, Three additional items we put on this list for Dr. Deagle. Uh, number one is the paratrooper bicycle. It's the only, as far as we know, the only full-size folding mountain bike. It is military issue to the U.S. Army paratroopers and the U.S. Ar and the U.S. Marines. Uh, next would be a hand crank AM FM weather band radio. Uh, I do offer these for sale at my website. It's also got a built-in flashlight and a cell phone charger. So uh, it's a pretty good little unit, uh, very compact, and, and uh, just a, a great little unit. And next would, and last but not least, a radiation detector with a gamma ray spectrometer. Um, radiation is part of what we're dealing with here, of course. This Fukushima event is uh, by far and away far worse than what happened at Chernobyl in Russia more than two, more than 20 years ago far worse. So that's the list. Um, as Linda pointed out, Linda from Ohio a few minutes ago, we always have new listeners. Being exposed to this material for the first time can be um, quite shocking. A lot of people, it's, it's so far away from their belief system that they simply outright reject it, and I expect that. That's why I go back frequently to the fact, and it is a fact, scientifically provable fact, and I've got some of the evidence at my website, that two years ago last month, uh, it'll, it was June 12, 2010, 
the Gulf Stream stopped. This is one of the many effects of the 10th planet or, or Nibiru on our planet is, uh, and their secondary effects. It's not a direct effect, it's a secondary effect. Back in 1979, when the scientists uh, with our government and the various world governments, once they satisfied themselves that Nibiru was real and where it was located with the Pioneer 10 space probe, they began making their preparations, part of continuity of government contingency planning. They also developed their cover story. Uh, the goal of our government and the world governments is to keep everybody going to work Monday through Friday, paying their mortgages, being distracted with professional sports and other things, to the last minute. And I think they'll be 97, 98% successful in that effort because of their Loctite grip on mass media. So the cover story they developed was that there's going to be something called human-created climate change, human-created global warming. That's the cover story that they decided on in 1979. It's not just a fantasy you know, put out by Al Gore. Al Gore is the, is the most visible spokesman. But this is, this is the storyline put out by NASA and NOAA, the National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration and the uh, National Aeronautical and Space Administration, that human beings and human activity is creating greenhouse gases, which in turn is warming the planet. That's a complete fabrication, a complete fantasy. And even little children can tell you about carbon footprints now and how we should all have a, a smaller carbon footprint. What a bunch of malarkey that is, as my friend Lucas would say. But they're, they've been wildly successful in obfuscation and confusing the issues, convincing people that things are something that, other than what they really are, and they will continue to be. In the meantime, if you become a student of my work, a student of Professor McCanning, a student of Emmanuel Velikowski, Zechariah Sitchin, and others, you can learn the truth. The truth is, what we're experiencing is, is cyclical in nature. It's a long cycle, 3,600 years in, in human lifetimes. That's a lot of lifetimes, 3,600 years. You figure four generations per century times 36 centuries. That's a lot of century. That's a lot of generations. The, the, the uh, cyclical nature of this planet going away from us for 1,800 years and coming back towards us for 1,800 years in a binary star system. I get emails from all kinds of people claiming they have photographs, claiming this, claiming that. Um, it's, it's natural to want to see this thing. Twelve years ago, when I found out about it, more than 12 years ago, I began that quest myself. I came to realize it doesn't matter. It really does it matter if I see a photograph of it or not? Eventually, uh, I will see photographs that are authentic, and so will you. Eventually, we'll see the real deal and here in the Northern Hemisphere. By then, we'll be down to the final few months, if not a few weeks or days, before all hell breaks loose. I encourage you to, now don't get caught up in in a quest trying to find a photograph of the 10th planet of Nibiru. It, it, it's pointless. It serves no purpose. You need to, What you need to do is educate yourself about this cycle where every 3,600 years, every civilization on the planet gets mashed down to the mud. Lucas told that story quite well in, in his first DVD. It's mainstream archaeology, by the way very mainstream archaeology and they they offer no explanation mainstream archaeology offers no explanation for all the civilizations on earth 3600 years ago collapsing coming to a halt they don't i know why and when you educate yourself you will know why as well it's very important that you ed educate yourself take the time to do the serious reading necessary. And it's going to take a lot of reading. You know, watching 
the four hours of my DVD is a good start, but that's all it is. At the end of my second disc, I give a fairly extensive bibliography of books that you can use to educate yourself. It's probably twenty to 30,000 pages worth of reading. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm quite serious here. There's a lot to learn. If you think you can have a comprehensive understanding of these matters by, by watching a four-hour lecture that I put together, well, you're, you're sadly wrong. That's just a beginning point. That's just a teaser. This is all that is. And I would urge you not to make major life decisions and major changes in career or where, where you live, the, the part of the country you live, based only on watching my four-hour lecture. I think you need to do more homework than that. I stand behind what's in my lecture. I document what's in my lecture. And it's, it's solid. If it wasn't solid, I would have been hammered into the ground long ago. This first disc came out in the uh, first week of September 2008. That's be four years ago uh, this September. The second disc came out just a little over a year ago. So, no, I, what, what, I, what I have there is very real and very provable. You know, I offer some of the evidence there at my website with the U.S. Navy images of the Gulf Stream before it stopped and the Navy, Navy images of the Gulf Stream after it stopped, which, of course, is where we are right now. The Gulf Stream having stopped and its effect on the ocean current and weather is why we're experiencing the unprecedented heat here in North America. There is no precedent. We have weather records going back to about the 1880s in much of the country. This is the hottest year ever recorded in the 130 years or so of record keeping. Unprecedented. And what will happen in the future in terms of weather, I can't tell you. I know, I think I can tell you with some certainty that it will be worse. That we'll have more frequent, more bizarre, and more dangerous weather events. Extremes of drought and extremes of too much rain. Extremes of high temperatures, extremes of low temperatures. Days where we have two and three hundred tornadoes in one day. Who ever heard of such a thing? Two and three hundred tornadoes in one day. Earthquakes in places that have never had earthquakes. As you see these things increase, become daily events, you'll know, because I've told you so, you'll know that we're getting closer to the end. The end being uh, when Nibiru, the tenth planet, the destroyer, impacts us to the point where we have a tilt of the Earth's axis, and these oceans come out of their basins. That's what's going to cause the worldwide flooding. They tilt a, what's called a pole shift. I can't tell you how many degrees it'll be. It's probably going to be in the range of 15 to 20 degrees, something like that. That may not sound like much. That is huge. That is massive. Poles don't need to flip 100, 180 degrees. They don't have to flip 90 degrees. A 15 or 20 degree shift in the poles would be enough to cause uh, coastal flooding on all continents. That's all it would take. And when I use the word all it will take here, that's, that's a massive, massive thing. They have something the size of our Earth tilt its axis 15 or 20 degrees. One of the, one of the hard one of the difficulties I had putting this whole thing together was that the Navy veterans I was debriefing, they were, they were sitting in the folding chairs getting the information. They were, not, they were not the scientists who put the information together. So the Navy veterans were told what would happen. They were not told why it would happen or how. They were told these oceans would come out of their basins. They weren't told what would precipitate that, what would make this happen. I had to find that out myself. That's when I found out there's a bulge of water at the equator, not quite 500 feet above sea level being measured at Cornwall, England, held in place by gravity and rotation of the Earth. Anything that disrupts 
where true north is, disrupts the rotation of the Earth, will disrupt that bulge of water, which is hundreds of thousands of cubic miles of water north and south of the equator, going north and south more than a thousand miles each direction. That's a massive bulge of water. And once that water is disrupted, and if you're near a coastal area, well, baby, watch out. You're going to be underwater. One of my consultation clients down in Texas, he's about 80 miles from the Gulf Coast. I arrive at his home, and I'm about to get out of the, of the suburban. I look down and I see sand and seashells. I mean, all the ground, everywhere, the entire region there, sand and seashells. I looked him straight in the eye and I said, this used to be under the ocean. He got kind of quiet because his wife was standing there and he had not told his wife yet. And he said, yes, John, it was. Much of East Texas used to be under the ocean. Even areas 80 and 100 miles from the ocean where the ocean is now used to be under the ocean. And those are, those are seashells. They're not the fossils of seashells. They are the seashells. So it wasn't millions and millions of years ago. <laughs> They're just plain old seashells like you'd find next to any ocean right now and have been laying there for about 3,600 years. <laughs> so this is your wake-up call, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I started out the show with a warning. I'm going to wrap it up with the same warning because I know there's people that can't tune in the entire show. One of my trusted private confidential sources tells me that military dependents are, that are uh, stationed with their spouses on the Atlantic Coast, Pacific Coast, and Gulf Coast are now attending briefings. They have to sign non-disclosed agreements, briefings that they could uh, soon get a bug out order where they would be ordered to leave these coastal areas taking only uh, the equivalent of a carry-on bag and, a, and one suitcase abandoning everything else they may get as much as two weeks notice before they need to get before they get this order they may not get two weeks notice uh, this notice would probably we believe be given sometime in the next four to eight weeks, four to six weeks. We don't know. It's not the kind of thing that would be given a year in advance or six months in advance, anywhere from a month to maybe three months out, maybe as far out as October. A lot of speculation about what may or may not, may not happen in October. So we got uh, part of July, all of August, September, and in October, it'd be October in about three months, close enough. So that's your heads up. That is your heads up, that uh, these briefings are being conducted. They're telling these people that the planet Nibiru is going to be causing flooding of all coastal areas worldwide. They're being shown a map that's very similar to the map in my DVD, Global Warming, what the government's been telling you, the map that I recreated with the help of three Navy veterans who saw the classified map the U.S. Navy displayed at their briefings going back to 1979. This is your heads up. Whatever you need to do to, to prior, make your list of priorities, start working on it for your uh, preparations, you need to be doing it. Time is of the essence. Time is of the essence. There's going to be some things similar in a lot of these lists and some, some things different. You all have our own situation to deal with. You know what your situation is. Just do it. I do private consultations, by the way, details at my website, thelibertyman.com. If you need some help uh, gaining some clarity and focus as to what you're doing, I'll be glad to do that for you and with you. Hopefully this will blow over. We'll get through this fall, get past the fall elections, and life will be grand. and We can enjoy a, a, a joyous uh, Christmas season where we celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus and celebrate uh, January 1st, 2013, with no major problems. I really, sincerely hope and pray that is what happens. I would, I would not be carrying out my duty as a journalist, however, if I held back this information from you. I have a duty and a responsibility as a journalist, which I am, an investigative journalist, to put this information out. What you do with it is up to you. 
That's it for today, ladies and gentlemen. You all be safe out there. Buy lots of ammunition. Never give up your guns. The code words for today, for those of you behind enemy lines, uh, turn to page 156, first paragraph. Page 156, first paragraph. Um, be safe and buy lots of ammunition. And thank you for uh, feeding the Bush family. The military. These would be the dependents that are stationed on the near the East Coast, the Atlantic Ocean, near the West Coast, the Pacific Ocean, and near the Gulf Coast. And at these briefings, are being told the following: that there is this planetary-sized object called Nibiru that's coming into our solar system. It's going to be causing very severe problems, much more so than it already is, very soon. And that they're being put on standby to bug out. They're being told that there'll be little notice, possibly two weeks or so, before they're given the notice to bug out. Oh, they're also, by the way, they're being shown a map at these briefings. And they're signing non-disclose agreements before they go into the briefings, before the briefings begin, agreeing to not disclose to anybody else what they're learning. Anyway, at these briefings, uh, these people are being told that um, when the call comes, they will only be able to take basically what you would take if you were flying on a commercial airline, uh, a carry-on bag and one check bag with uh, family photographs, uh, personal uh, important papers, documents, and whatever clothes you can fit in. End of story. What would you do if he had six months to prepare? What would you do if he had six weeks to prepare? There's going to be different answers to those three different questions, aren't there? Six weeks is a possibility. I hope it's wrong. I truly, in, in, in my heart of hearts, hope that that is wrong. I know that at some point that we will get warnings like this that are viable and will be the real deal. And I, unfortunately, I think this may be it. I don't know. I, I, hope, it, I hope it is not. Uh, my source will be, I'll be talking to my source on a weekly basis for the uh, foreseeable future, for probably several months into the future, probably till the end of this year, most likely. We're going to be getting to go, getting to know each other real well, <laughs> and uh, communicating as we uh, track this thing and see where it goes. Uh, my source doesn't want to hear this either. I mean, we're we're both mature men. We're both Vietnam vets, and um, he has a life he's put together for himself and his family that he doesn't want to see disrupted. I have a life I've put together for myself and my family. I would just soon not see disrupted. Uh, but reality is, well, it is what it is. And when, I, when, we, when, we get, when we get the call, when we get the, the call about the bug out, uh, I will report it the, the next show I'm on the air. Anyway, the... the, the um, my source told me about this dependent. My source is not the dependent, by the way. The dependent was looking at my map and saying that my map very, uh, was very close to the map that uh, the dependent was shown at the briefing. Very close. Uh, as, as we say, as Tim Spencer would say, close enough for government work. There's going to be deviations between uh, the map that I recreated working with the three Navy veterans and the map the government is showing. However, uh, it is close enough. Uh, knowing if Aunt Nellie's house is going to be underwater in South Carolina really is not the issue. And no, it's not. The issue is the Atlantic Coast, and they have to abandon all their other clothing, personal possessions, furniture, appliances, automobiles, all the rest of it. 
Uh, I, well, the automobiles, I'm not sure. They might be bugging out in personal vehicles. That's, that's unclear to me. And it's probably going to be a mixed bag of how people make their way uh, away from these coastlines. I was talking to Tim Spencer about this and my friend, Command Sergeant Major Page, uh, both of whom are veterans of the U.S. military. And um, the agreement between the three of us was that these kinds of briefings would not take place a year in advance. They would not take place six months in advance. Four to six weeks is probably pretty likely. Probably not more than three or four months. So that's, that's our belief. I hope we're wrong. I hope that uh, this turns out to be a, uh, incorrect information. If it is, well, that's great. If it's not, if it turns out to be correct, then you've got your heads up. So I asked a question this morning to all of you out there, to the several thousand of you listening to me on the morning of July 11, 2012. What would you do if you had six years to prepare? We are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. Behave yourselves. <laughs> so that is the secret to Lumacorp's success. Control the head, and then you control the body. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. This is J.R. Moore coming to you live from deep in the mountains of the Missouri Ozarks on Wednesday, the 11th day of July, year of our Lord, 2012. Welcome to the John Moore Show. I did get a call yesterday from a private trusted source, a very disturbing call uh, that I've been pondering how to report this to you since I got it mid-morning yesterday. And I've decided the best thing to do is just to, well, tell it like it is and not hold back, except to protect my source, of course. Well, here's what's going on. Uh, the U.S. military in the last week has begun conducting briefings for dependents, dependent military families, uh, the uh, husbands and wives of men and women 